So the first time Rishabh showed me what the data could do, it just blew my mind. He had built this amazing new algorithm for the UP elections in 2017. And when Sanjeev and I saw it, um, we said, wow. And if you put a journalistic mind to this and ask the right algorithm to do, if you treated it intelligently. So we asked Rishabh to make some tweaks. Um, and I don't think he slept for three days after that. Is that right, Rishabh? I did not tell him. That was uh, intense. It's the kind of thing you can do when you're young. I don't think I can do that anymore. But uh, uh, that was uh, was really fun. I remember one of the things we looked at was we looked at the surnames of every individual in different parts of, uh, of UP. And we then tried to figure out from these surnames what kind of caste distribution we can get. And I remember that you and Sanjeev both uh, took so long. Sanjeev ended up calling so many of his uh, old friends in UP. It just asked him, Kiyaj, uh, is her name ka cast kya hota hai? And uh, I remember you guys gave me a list of some like 250 surnames or so. And uh, then just feeding that into the algorithm. Uh, and because UP has just so many people, uh, just that script took about two hours to run. But uh, it was just such a fun experience. I, I, uh, I look back at it very, very fondly. Uh, Risha, I think for me, one of the great um, uh, delights of working with you on this was that it showed me a new way of doing social science research and i'll give you uh, and tell me what you think i mean when when rishabh first came to me showing me what the narad index could do uh, it was basically putting together a lot of keywords and showing clusters of keywords when uh, they when they populate and become bigger clouds and smaller clouds over 10 years over periods of time for different kinds of publications especially when you have the full data set it really works but you know what I wanted to see as, as a historian and as a political scientist or as a journalist was, okay, I can see these clusters, but what were they saying within these clusters? Um, and I wanted to see that document. Uh, and the first cut didn't have the document. And Rishabh then built a, a new uh, a new version of Narad Index where every you could not only see the patterns, you could click on it and it'll take you to those stories. You could see what the BJP was saying and that, you know, what I would have taken three years to do otherwise manually, you could just do it at the click of a button. It was just such a great learning experience because uh, I think one of the things that, that really came to me with this is what happens when you stop taking a subset of what people are saying and you don't even often get it from their mouths but you see it amplified by social media or just amplified by other writers in the space but instead of that what, what happens when you just look at what a person has said in their entirety and that it often just changes the way you perceive a fact uh, as well because a lot of the times what we see from, from social media is just something that is uh, very inflammatory or just something very, very extreme. But when you look at what, like the entirety of what someone has said, you, you see that, oh, like that is maybe less than a percent of what they talk about. And more often than not, all politicians essentially just talk about uh, just bread and butter issues for voters, your roads, electricity, development, uh, even vaccines. Uh, and so just, just just learning that was such a great experience. And the, the main learning for me was uh, just, it does sound so obvious, but when you're trying to figure out what someone uh, is saying, just look at what they're saying and don't look at what other people say they're saying. For me, Rishabh, I think one of the most interesting things was, see, the thing is you can have lies, damn lies and statistics, right? I mean, that's the problem with data. Uh, you can make the data say anything if you don't do it right. It's about what questions you ask and what kind of data sets you use and how intelligently you use. So, for example, for me, the uh, once we looked at the data sets, the data, once we were very sure of the data sets and how we had designed it, it could tell you what happened. Now, we, it did, couldn't tell you why it happened. Um, and what we wanted to do on, on the ground was to go to the ground and firstly verify on the ground whether what the data is showing, whether this actually happened or not, or whether there is some data anomaly and then find out from the decision makers who made those decisions, which led to those spikes in the data. Um, or say, for example, if the BJP suddenly starts talking about the Ram Temple more in a particular month and less on another month and more on farmers on that another month, was it concentrated strategy or was it just coincidence or, or was it just serendipity? You want to go and find out what happened and why. Um, and I think that was the real next learning because the data allowed us to focus our questions and our the patterns in a very clear way. And then you wanted to go and find out the reasons behind it. And that's when Sanjeev and I just traveled around the country. Sanjeev, we started with Gujarat, right? In fact, um, one of the interesting things about the Gujarat election was that since we had traveled so much, we knew that uh, there is a problem for the BJP. We knew that the problem was in the Saurashtra. 
and uh, when counting day was on i remember the three of us were together and we kept saying that you know uh, the initial trend showed that bjp was at what 120 130 and we kept saying that this cannot be possible because you know that's not what we saw and uh, by the evening the number had come down to 100 number that we had uh, thought that it would be and eventually it settled down at 99 so i think you know uh, that gave us sort of uh, you know credibility or a confidence to say that yes what data showed us we were able to correlate the same thing with our own experiences uh, going on the ground traveling across the state to be able to get a full sense it's like a full 360 degree uh, you know uh, informative analysis that we were able to do on this sanjeev one of the great learnings for me on this journey was how how difficult it is to track caste you know we have all the other indices which track caste and what we discovered was the real problem is that caste most people think that certain surnames signify certain castes but that's not the case the same surname can be from five or six different castes and that if you don't understand that that completes how you understand political caste so for example in up uh, and here's one example that really struck me was that varmas varma is a surname which if you are a varma from noida you are a gujjar which is obc varmas from eastern up are scheduled caste varmas from near bulandchera sunad which is obc varmas from the avad region are kurmis or obcs again and those from eastern up are kayas uh, you know if you don't understand that minuteness uh, then you are always going to get your caste analysis wrong and for us that challenge was uh, how do we bring that nuance into data analysis so for example choudhrys from balia are yadavs Sanjeev, you taught me this. Those from Western UP are Jats. Those from four districts in UP are four particular districts are Kurmis. And Kushwahas can be both upper caste Rajput or OBC. Rawats in Uttarakhand can be Rajputs or Thakurs or uh, Rawats from UP can also be Pasi Dalits. Um, you know, in UP, what you see as caste from a distance is not that you go nearer and it's a different caste with the same surname. Uh, and you know, when we built the Mehta Singh Index. Um, Uh, Sanjeev, it was a real learning experience for all of us because you know we put together a real network across this, across the state in every district where we actually spoke to um, uh, you know key uh, political party presidents, everybody on the ground to cross verify every name that we were looking at over the last thirty years. Of course, it was a big challenge because you know um, knowing Dalian, he doesn't stop. I mean, he doesn't take no for an answer. But the challenge was that you know we all knew that. There was some social engineering happening, right? The Congress tried to do something, BSP tried to do something, Samajwadi Party had done something, and then eventually the BJP came. And but there was no way for us to be able to prove the same using data and facts, right? Because it was a big exercise. And while this conversation was happening, in came Rishab. And I still remember that you know we were sitting in that cafe coffee day in ITO. That's where. Uh, I think Nalini had gone to meet you first, and then suddenly called me and said, "Quickly come! There is something that I have found." And I was like, "I don't know why is he calling me?" And then you know, and I see Rishab. I'm like, "What will this young guy, you know, do?" And then suddenly Rishab opened his laptop and he said, "Tell me something." He quickly typed something, and then there was a code running, and I could just see scrambling happening. You know, it reminded me of the movie Matrix. I was like, "This is surreal. It can't be happening." and then i was just amazed that oh my god there is technology and this guy knows how to use this technology and i think that's when we got the confidence that you know we we, we can pull this off and from there on uh, i'm it's just a sense of achievement that nalin has been able to put together so many things with uh, this index being a part of it and i'm really looking forward to reading this book with all the data and all the analysis that people have known for the years but no one was able to collate it together and give shape to what the bjp or the political parties think so i think sanjeev uh, you know that's exactly what happened but you know uh, for me the you know i went wow when i saw what richard were built but you know for me the real big concern was that you know you see data and you see data and uh, some the problem is that most people who work in data don't understand politics so they build something which which is built for something else and apply it here and it gives you all kinds of worry results what we wanted to do was when rishab rishab was the rare data scientist who understands politics uh, and and you don't have to explain to him the basics you know he just got it so what we wanted to do was we wanted to bring our 20 years of 
ground understanding and the kind of questions we as journalists or as social scientists want to ask combine it with the technical wizardry that rishabh has and combine forces and really find some answers um, and you know we worked for 3 4 years on that and we kept innovating this we kept building new products as we went along we kept testing it and for me the real thing was once you build it how do you know you got it right so uh, how do you know that this is the right answer and this we still not making some inadvertent mistake so then you keep going to the ground to recheck it first um, uh, you, and that's why we traveled so much to so many constituencies and on the mehta singh index in particular we got jay muruk of vmr to separately blind peer review in 50 different uh, districts of up every single caste name that we had uh, and you know we were almost uh, at the uh, we found the same answers and that gave me confidence that look now this is something that we are confident to take it to the world if i may add and i'm sorry to sound feudalistic and casteist and all that but uh, you must remember that rishabh is a shrivastav from raibareli so the shrivastavs from the avadh region especially uh, they've had this thing over centuries you know they used to run all the administration manage all the accounts etc for all the people who ruled uh, that region for many centuries so i was not surprised that he was able to do this sanjeev only you can bring caste into every conversation so rishabh is a shivastha from raibareli you are a takar from kanpur which i never hear the end of and i am a khatri from from a refugee family in delhi so um uh, you know but when it's sanjeev you can never take caste out out of out of the conversation even if it's a newer i am waiting for rishabh to say something no uh, no uh, no i i think rishabh is firstly we have forced him to wear a shirt and a jacket <laughs> probably the second time in his life uh, the first time was also in his life was also with us when he first watched a video with it 3 years ago so uh, so i think we have already put too much pressure on rishabh and now you're talking about his caste origins yeah no i um haven't like like in, in singapore we're just like so sheltered from this entire conversation so i just have very like very very few opinions i think the 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 one thing i find very surprising is is just because a lot of people in my generation uh, particularly uh people who have been to fancy colleges etc like we don't think that caste is such a a, a big deal and this is why you see so many op-eds from young people talking about why a journalist should focus on caste but This is doing this analysis just made me realize how damn important it still is, and um, and and while there are a lot of people, particularly affluent people in my generation, who feel that hey, like caste is not a, a big deal anymore, uh, just just looking at the data, seeing the, the correlations between caste, electoral outcomes, and so many economic outcomes, uh, that was quite an eye opener for me, and uh, uh, and particularly when you guys did the Mehta Singh index and and showed me the data, which is like Rishabh, look at how. the caste mix of the bjp has about look at how they have used caste as a way to uh, to increase their umbrella in in places like up in particular that was such an eye opener and that was such a rigorous analysis no i know i think rishabh i think it's been a fantastic journey but i think what we have built is the bedrock of this book but this is only the beginning uh, and i think what we have uh, for me the real fun has been finding new ways of understanding how society is functioning and this has given us startling new insights which just uh, you know we are political junkies right uh, sanjeev and i have been political junkies for 20 years um, and yet about 90% of what we found in this book we did not know until we started looking at this data uh, it really uh, it really made us sit up uh, you know we thought we knew it all we thought you know uh, we've been tracking this party we've been tracking for it for so long so the, for me this is the beginning I, i think this is the beginning of 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 uh, using tools in new ways to get more social science insights insights which can really drive change which can really drive new conversations beyond the binaries of just what's in the social media echo chambers of oh this is right or this is wrong first you want to understand what's happening and of course you can have a view on what's right and what's wrong i also have a very clear view on what's right and what's wrong but you can't really begin to un- to to start fighting the battles you are fighting uh, without really understanding what what's happening in the ground beneath your feet otherwise we just tilt tilt tilting at windmills i think yeah i think and also it's important that uh, the book that you put together and all the hard work that's gone into it uh you know we should allow other people to collaborate and work on this and you know keep our data open in the sense that you know we've we've tried to build a framework and then you know other social scientists can try and build upon it so i think you know what 
what the, what the book the new bjp has done is it's going to shed a new light on the way politics is viewed in the country and maybe that will lead to a lot of change in the way people think and study about politics especially caste and the way political parties communicate so i feel that if uh, as a group and of course i know nalin will be more than happy that you know we build on this and it grows organically where more people can come and contribute i think that will be a fitting tribute to this lovely book that nalin has put together uh, well thank you so much sanjeev and rishabh you know it couldn't have been done without the work that you guys put in so yeah very grateful for that so i am i'm really curious about it like the book is going to be a uh, big treat like I, i i love reading the early manuscript but what's next because this is such a novel approach and uh, you have clearly uh, dug so many interesting uh, things in here uh, how do you see uh, this moving forward like uh, is the data for the book going to be uh, available somewhere and uh, how do you think other people can can build on top of it so we are putting uh, the good question rishab so again like i said this is the beginning uh, the bedrock um, is certainly not going to end here um, uh, from my point of view uh, we created a website for the book which will be the repository for all the data which is in the book uh, there are some almost more than 150 charts and figures uh, in the book uh, which is quite a lot Uh, across 17 different topics ranging from gender to the northeast to the south um to the south of the vindhyas uh, the bjp's politics is very different from what is in the north to the hindi heartland um um to the rss and so on and so forth um all these charts will reside on the mehta singh index uh, we will of course um um as we go along with the data sets are very large as we go along on a case by case basis of course make these available to researchers to look at to examine um and we have we, the, the, this is the beginning of a new public debate uh, that's the whole point of this right uh, and obviously what we have what we have show uh, uh, these tools have applications beyond much more than just the study of the bjp uh they have applications for political party for anyone who's interested in politics anyone who's interested in india these have applications for uh, I mean, you can use them for commercial uses you can use them for political mobilization you can use these tools for analysis so analysis after all gives you an insight you it's about how you what you use insight for for me my interest was to get an understanding of what's happening in my country and to start a conversation but these tools are uh, you know we built the tools and they have multiple applications which you know for example you are building data narrative.com that we've been talking about a lot so they are, i mean these are all part of a continuum i think all this work i mean it's all last 5 years we've been talking about this stuff and building different products from our different interest points and our vantage points uh, to drive things uh, to answer the questions that we want to answer for ourselves no i'm 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 really excited about about the website and i'm just so glad that you have uh, have, have chosen to just open the data and, and really put it up for scrutiny instead of just um saying that hey we have this data of using some magic ball which other people can't really access so i'm uh, really excited to just both read the book and more importantly just go through the website and just 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 look at how you've created this amazing narrative from all of those those disparate charts no thank you both alan and sanjeev this was such a fun conversation and i'm just incredibly excited for the book to come out oh it was great working with you rishab and i'm obviously looking forward to working uh till for the next few decades till whenever i'm alive with the both of you thank you so much risha and nalin always a pleasure to work with you you know i, you know, I have you, to say the first i i, I, have I, I haven't i haven't finished it i hope you will take a break at some stage and we also get a break in that sense but it was great working with you all the best for your new book uh thank you sanjeev uh, you know um um it's i have learned a great deal working with risha and with you in very different ways um and the, the whole point was to bring different skill sets together a ground understanding of politics uh, at the district level at the zilla tehsil level with a big picture data understanding and then trying to make sense of it all i think this is the beginning i think this is the bedrock i think we're doing going to do many more exciting things together and i hope um people around the world look at this and see what this can do because because this has changed certainly my understanding of what's happening in my country completely um like i said i have learned 90% of what's in the book um is is stuff i didn't know before i started and i i'm a political junkie who tracked the party for 20 years as a journalist um so yeah uh, it's opened my eyes and i hope you look at the book and uh, look at it read it uh, critique it tell us what you think
would love to hear what you think thank you